So, welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to William Chow, the godfather of anime, and also known as the King of Smut 95. <laughs> and arguably, he has one of the biggest hentai collections in North America, arguably. <laughs> arguably. Would you say so? I wouldn't say the biggest, but I have some pretty, clear, some pretty key titles, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty key titles. And what we wanted to do, it's been about a year and four months since you were last on, which we were talking about, we can't believe it's been that long. And we thought, let's get together and talk about Japanese games and what got you into Japanese games and kind of myself as well. And just talk all about that and some of our obsessions. And Will's got some crazy things over here that we're going to get into in a little bit. So I'll start off with you. What got you into video games? You can start from the olden days, you yeah, know? Yeah, in the olden days, you know, like I was just much like everyone else, you know, uh, the big games that, that we used to always play was, uh, you know, uh, on the Atari. Oh, know, 2600, yeah, that's what I had. And, uh, but um, when I really got into Japanese games is when I actually opened up my Japanese animation store. Yeah. And this was in the era of the, you know, the Super Nintendo, PlayStation hasn't come out yet. And uh, one of the very first things I ended up spending like almost two thousand dollars on. What? It was one of those Super Nintendo floppy drive control oh, devices. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. We could get copy games and you could yeah, put you them put, in. Yeah, there. put it onto it. Yeah. So it's so something like uh, Final Fantasy took like four floppy diskettes. <laughs> and it take so, forever to load yeah, it into you, memory. You have to load each floppy disk one by one. But I, I set up a console inside uh, one of my stores, and then basically uh, customers would just come in and just sit down and start playing video games. And then sit there for like eight hours a day playing, you know, Street Fighter and all that stuff. But then suddenly these other people started coming in and they said, hey, why don't you get this game, whatever. Or they have another you know, idea to, you know, to, to get a game where they bring in a game on a floppy disk and they want to try it out. That game ended up being Langrisa. Or right. A lot of people know it as a war song. On the, a war song over here in the Genesis. Yeah. And we're t are we talking about the Mega Drive version or are we talking about the PC Engine version? This, uh, th this case was the Mega Drive version. Right, yeah. yeah. And then someone else pointed out that, oh, you know, they've got that for the Sega Genesis under the name War Song. So, yeah. so I started playing uh, that and I got really interested in this, uh, the whole entire, uh, you know, um, you know, combat system. Where strategy. You know, strategy, yeah. uh, you know, hex gridded type of games like that. Um, and then shortly after, then, um, you know, the, the PC Engine started rolling out. And right. I got into games like uh, Newtopia. Oh know. yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Great, uh, yeah. great Zelda kind of style yeah. clone type of game, but really, really great. Now... You went from the 2600 to the uh, right to the PC Engine, right to the Super Nintendo. But was there anything in between? Was there anything that kind of led up to you even getting? Was that the Game Doctor with the floppy disks? Yes, yes. It, I have yeah. one too. Yeah. I got mine years later. Yeah. Everybody who had one, everybody had one in Vancouver. It's like yeah. I don't know. We it have the, the, it was the way to do it, right? Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of um, Asian malls here that you can go in and just buy this stuff. Yes, yes. Right, right. you yeah. know, type of thing. So where did you get into? You open the store. Mm -hmm. And you were just like, you're giving anime to people on VHS and stuff like that. And then the game stuff started. Did you just get like a, a PC Engine? Was it just the, was it the Game Doctor that started it all? The Game Doctor started it all. Oh. Um, at that time, I was also sort of working part time at Radio Shack. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, Radio Shack uh, over here in North America was one of the very big supporters for the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics. Graphics yes. Because they sold it, right? Yeah. And so then that's, you know, then I started getting, you know, some of the games that, that they sold, you know, as uh, you know, under the store banner. Yeah. But then they, they all again, same thing. You know, customers are telling me, "Hey, you know, there's this game. You know, there's a that, that, that's on CD and whatnot that you can get for this the machine." And you know, they say that you can attach you know, the Turbo Graphics Duo. Yeah. It had the CD in it. Oh so yeah. Then, so um, there was all these other you know really nice games that, that, that came up for that system as well. Yeah. And uh, back at that time, uh, again. Langrisse was also available for that system, but they also was all, all these other, you know, sort of strategy games that also came out at that time that I really got interested. Um, things like uh, Lady Phantom was another one. Yes, I do remember that one as yeah. well. Did when you were at Radio Shack, I gotta ask you this question: Did you get any discounts on the Turbo Graphics games back then? Uh, just our staff discount, which is like ten percent. Ten percent? It was still something. It was still something, but uh, the the other thing that we, we did when we did uh, you know, things at Radio Shack is is that. When something goes on clearance, yes, every month it drops down ten percent. I got most yeah. of my Turbo Graphics games yeah. from Radio Shack from the bin. Yeah, I remember going in there and for fourteen dollars I got Military Madness. Yeah, yeah and exactly. that game was amazing. You know, yeah. another you know another hex strategy game. Yeah, and that's where I got my Military Madness and loved that game. I played the hell out of that. Exactly, I love and all that. Yeah. yeah, really, really great. So you're playing like Langrisser, and like a lot of people won't even know Langrisser. They know uh, Fire Emblem. 
because that's a really popular strategy game now for everybody, but yeah. nobody knows Languister anymore. It's kind of like died down. And they yeah. changed it later on, and it kind of got... Yeah, they made more renditions, they made you know, more of a story to that. Kind of action-y, yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't like I didn't like the direction they took it per se. I like the original early days uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and the character designs and all that kinds of stuff. So there you are. You have a store. You have all these people coming in playing all these copy games back then. I love it. And you have the PC Engine. Did you get Did you get the PC Engine CD-ROM first, or did you get the Turbo Graphics CD-ROM? Did you end up getting the North American versions? I started with the North American version. Okay, yeah. Because I, I heard that it was it was compatible. Yes. At that time, so so that's one of the big things that was going on at that time was. Because I think also PlayStation was starting to roll out, and there was this uh, yes. this big thing called region locking. So you couldn't play Japanese games on a North American system, but on the PC Engine you could. You could, and that was so, a, that was a big deal. I even I imported deal. so many games. So uh, yeah, again, I, I really concentrated on trying to get more of those you know those type of games, that kind of stuff. I didn't you know let the PlayStation go aside for a while. Yeah, where did you? So you got the PC Engine for me. I was looking in video game magazines trying to figure out what was the cool PC Engine games to get. Mm -hmm. What was, you, how did you figure out? Because I, I would go into your store and you had like all the coolest stuff. So yeah. how did you figure out what to get? Um, uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the, those animation magazines was basically our key to uh, all the merchandise that came out in Japan. So basically, you'd, you'd open up uh, the, you know, your new type or your yeah, Fenix or whatever, yeah. and then. In the new releases section, which is usually in the center, it's usually all text with no yeah, pictures. Yeah, I know that section. Yeah. I remember that section yeah. back then. And you look on there, and then it'll actually tell you what's coming out. Right. And um, and so what you do, so then what I eventually found out is that you know they, they they actually have separate magazines. You know, just like we have a magazine for PlayStation, we have a magazine for. Um, you know, uh, like Xbox or whatever. Right. They had also magazines just dedicated for PC Engine, dedicated for Super Nintendo, dedicated for PlayStation. So I started ordering the Japanese versions of those oh. magazines. Do you still have those magazines? Yes, I do. That's amazing because those magazines are worth a lot of money now. They're very hard to get. Like I yeah. think it's like PC Engine Freak and things like that. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. All those and mm. I those magazines are gold. Like to look through those oh, now yeah, would be absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so you started kind of getting those magazines and saying, oh, I'll, I'll take a shot on this. And those are, these games are expensive. We talked about, Will used to get all the Laserdiscs back in the day. They were yeah. so expensive. Oh, so with the PC Engine games, they're like $100 plus shipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there was no you know, discount or whatever, like, you know, bin for those things. No, right? no. So you just, you know, look at a, a magazine and say, oh, okay, it's all you know, 6,000 yen or whatever. So that's, you know, 60 bucks US. Yeah. And then the markup and everything to ship it, you know, it ends up pretty close to 100 bucks by the time I get it. And it's like... You know, it could be total garbage. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, it was like, uh, hey, it's an animation game or something yeah. like that. Like, uh, like uh, I remember there was a Sailor Moon game for the PC Engine. I said, okay, Sailor Moon's pretty popular. <laughs> I'll, I'll get, I don't know what kind of game it really is. I, I, I can sort of flip through the magazines and sort of like see some screenshots here and there, but that doesn't really tell you what kind of game it is. Wow. It, it could be just one of those, you know, play the story of the of the anime and that's all it is right right and for a lot of english speaking people that, and coming in the stores like oh, yeah. this is cool but i know what's going on it's not really an action game with the yeah. arcade game like that your store was amazing because when i was 21 i came back from england you'd open the store and i came in and it was i mean you couldn't believe this back in the day i could rent PC Engine games from you, yeah. and I remember I rented the the strategy game for Macross. Yeah, there's a East... place gun that one. Oh, well, let's talk <laughs> yeah. about that in a sec. And uh, East Four, and I'm telling you, I had the best time ever. I mean, it was incredible. It was near the, the PC Engine was slowing down, but it still was yeah. still hot at it was that still point. Hot at, that, yeah. at that point, yeah. So what was about the strategy? Because I remember you came in and you rented uh, the PC Engine uh, wow. the game for uh, Macross that? strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah, you rented that out, and like you know, you had it for like a week, so that's fine. And then I remember. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, at the time, we had uh, Mooj, who was doing all the subtitling for Macross Plus. Okay, and he right. heard of this game, saying, like, "Oh, yes, it's some, it's a strategy game where you get to, you know, you know, do the Macross, and you get, you get to control all the the fighters, the Valkyries, and, and all and, that. Yeah, and you get to do all these different missions to, yeah. you know, to, 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 to stop the Zentradian, right? And he goes, "Oh, I, I, I want to try to play it. You know, I, I don't want to play it, right?" Because that's you know, because I had all these terminals all set up, and you know, right. people just, oh, "Yeah, sure, I'll, 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 I'll boot up this game on this system. We'll play it, right?" Yeah, yeah. And of course now he goes, no, 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 some guy's got to rent it out uh, you know, until Friday, right? <laughs> so Friday rolls around, like, and you know, almost at the end of the day, you still haven't shown up. <laughs> and he's like, you should go call this guy, you guys start charging him late fees. <laughs> like, oh. That's his late fees coming down. Will never charge late fees, he was yeah. very good. 
I, I remember you said, oh yeah, a couple weeks, it's fine. You, there was no time for that, yeah. I remember. Yeah. There was no like anything like, oh, it has to be bad by this day. It was yeah, pretty... because yeah, there's no way that like you could, you know, like copy the game, per se. No. You know, and, and then and then basically be able to play it on your own, right? You had to basically, you know, you had to, ha you know, Read the game, you know, basically play it all the way through. Yes. And, then... and, and do you know what I did with that game as well? Like, I not only played the games, obviously, but I would put them in and I would record the music onto tape. Yes, yes. That's what I had yes, to do because yes. that's, and you could do that putting it in a regular CD player. The music would just play yeah. on its own. It'd say, say something like HE System. Um... Well, the first track is always like a, the warning sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I actually have it warning, memorized. Warning, this is the PC Engine CD-ROM. Th that's yeah. the American version, but I, I yeah. put in so many Japanese games, I yeah. always heard oh, the Japanese yeah. Yeah. version of it. And which is a warning, don't put this into yeah. a regular CD player. But you do anyways. Yeah. And it plays the regular music, and I just tape it onto tape, and yeah. I was good. And that, that music is really good. Oh, like, yeah, it's a CD quality. You know, and at that time, you know, for, for, a, for a favorite game like, like Grisa, for me, yes. that had the best soundtrack ever, yeah. that, 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 that you could have. Right. right. And none of this you know, 8-bit digi, you know, yeah. digital MIDI thing that Yeah, you know. really, that was a big thing. I've talked about it so much on this channel, with the Turbo Graphics PC Engine, the soundtracks were sometimes bigger and better than the game. They made the games better, for sure. Another big game I remember I rented off you was Flash Hiders. Oh, yes, yes. That was a great Flash. game back. Yes. It was. You yeah. look at it now and it's like, ooh, it doesn't, it doesn't hold up so well. It was a Street Fighter yeah. clone and it was quite quite good yeah, back then. Because it had you know, different moves and that kind of stuff. I think it was a little bit easier to operate some of the moves than on some of the characters. But yeah. it had a, verse, uh, a nice variety of different characters. And you know, what, take, what takes us out of that uh, generation was, I remember I came into your store one day and everybody's crowded around this one game. I'm like, what's everybody playing? And you had the PlayStation 1. You just gone, and, yep. and the crowds, uh, everybody's playing uh, Toshiden, uh, Toshiden? Toshiden, yeah, yeah, Toshiden. Valerie Toshinden. Yeah. yeah, everybody was playing that and crowding yeah. around, and I couldn't even see it. There were so many people in yeah, the store. Right, that yeah, day. we did, we spent hours playing that game. Yeah. And and, yeah. and for that matter, like, you know, the, 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 you know that's when the t basically the PlayStation series of games you know, sort of took over, and a lot of people got really interested in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, uh, I, uh, I at that same time also got uh, the Sega Saturn. Yes. And uh, did you import a lot of Sega Saturn games? Yeah, actually I did. Um, because a lot of the games they were expensive. Too. They were expensive, but I found that they had a lot of uh, really nice anime type based games. Oh, big time. Um, uh, one of the ones that came right to mind was um, Magical Knights Rares. Yes, that was a beautiful... Yeah. You could finish the game in like a couple hours. Yeah, but, and, and that, that, that was a nice one of those, you know, you get to play through the game as it did in the anime and sort of, you know, play and watch the, the, you know, the game sort of thing. Yeah, that, that was, was a beautiful yeah. game. And then you had, you had Lu like, uh, well, you had Luna and Sega CD, yeah. but on the Sega Saturn, there was so many... Yeah. Fantastic Guardian games. Heroes. Guardian Heroes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. That was a, you know, hours playing. Oh, that one, like, hours playing Guardian Heroes. That was great. Yeah, working designs was really, they were really great bringing the Cosmic Fantasy over to the Triple Graphics and bringing a lot of the Japanese style games. That's what, working designs was a huge big deal company yeah. back in the day, yeah. uh, bringing that kind of stuff. And that gets us into some other obsessions. What were some of your other obsessions back then? With games like I know we're going to talk about DOA unless you want to yeah. go into that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Let's okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, I, can, I, can I say um, I remember going to your birthday. I think it was your 37th birthday. I can't remember, and everybody was there. We went to oh the macaroni grill. Macaroni, yes, I still think I saw pictures of that. Yeah, yeah. So do I. And that's a, that's the that place is no longer there. They yeah. had a big fire there, unfortunately. Great place, anyways. Um, but I remember that, and I remember everybody was around this huge table, and DOA Extreme was coming out for the Xbox, yeah. and everybody was talking about it. It was the big deal game. You know, all the hentai lovers were going crazy. Yes, exactly. And I was just like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll get an Xbox just for that game. I was just being fun. But everybody was really into it. And that gets into you. You got really into yeah, this game. Yeah, I really got, actually, not, not just the but the Extreme Beach Volleyball. Right? Yes. I, uh, I logged, I still have to save game file, but I've logged over 500 hours on that game. Okay. <laughs> Not playing volleyball per se. The word that's yeah. the side. Um, I I went to the major quest of actually trying to you know get all the bathing suits oh onto gosh. all basically all the girls. Essentially. Wow. All right. So I had like a, a spreadsheet made out <sighs> where it's like all the girls on this side, all the girls on this side, and I, I marked whether or not they you, you like them, you love them, or you dislike them, and then went through an entire grid like that. And I had all the bathing suits on another Excel spreadsheet with all the character, all the girls, and 
and basically I, I X'd off each one as I as I got. Yeah, you had these huge facts. You you actually wrote a game pack for it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I wrote a big huge game pack on how to get the particular bathing suit on to a particular girl, whether if she if she hated it or disliked it, when <laughs> to gift them, and if you got a certain response, don't do this and do something else. And the trial yeah. and error, man. Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's just endless. And uh, I even got to a point where I was uh, like, the, I was trying to record certain things that showed up on the screen because someone said that. You know, like you know, we're, they're they're talking about it on the internet again. This is through news groups and stuff. So, you yeah, know, you, you didn't get like you know YouTube videos on how to FAQ with this. Yeah, and so yeah. that's that's another thing. The yeah. internet was not the way it is now. Right. So 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 someone would say, hey, I think I see something. Uh, you know, if if you see this sort of effect or this sort of thing on the screen. Uh, you know, go and do this, right? So I'd be sitting there recording like six hours of me playing the, you know, Dare Live Beach Volleyball, seeing if I could see oh my this God. little thing. And I was like, no, okay, I didn't see it. And so I, so oh I sat all day in the store playing this, right? You know, <laughs> customers be coming in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember all these days, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> what was it? Now, like, it's kind of funny. What was it? That, was it a feeling of completion to, to absolutely say, I absolutely did everything you could do in this game. Yes, uh, yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> and in the end, I only actually finished three of the girls. I got all the suits on, it was like, uh, you know, pretty close to like 400 suits. Right. And I got it all they on. They had that many suits. in the game? Yeah. Oh my god. Including all the ones that which were essentially just pieces of string. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the ones we were actually trying to get, but. Was it, so, so, so looking back now, was it worth the time and effort? Oh, probably not, but, no, but, uh, but I enjoyed playing the game. <laughs> That's great. I, just, I definitely we, enjoyed it. We wanted to talk about that. About I always I always remember you back in the day working on it. I was just like, holy shit, this guy is obsessed with doing this. You know, you're never lazy about it. You're like, oh, I'm giving up. You're like, oh, no, I, I, I can get this. I can do this. I can do this. 500 hours? That's wow. incredible. That is absolutely incredible. What were some of your other obsessions like to do with like video games or... Anything like that? Anything too crazy? I know we, you have a certain device over here if you want to show this. Yeah, this is my, yeah, so you know, this is my new obsession. Um, so, I, so, so we weren't going to bring this into the episode, but Will had it with him, and I'm like, oh no, no, bring it with you. And you have to explain what all of this is. Hmm. So this has to do with a game that I want to say I haven't played, but is huge in Vancouver right now. Yes. There's a, there's so many people outside of my building all the time. Yes. Huge groups of people yeah. that gather and you're one of these people. Like, yes. not that it's a bad thing, I think this is great, yeah. but you've taken the obsession to an unbelievable level. You gotta bring all this okay. stuff up. So the game that I'm playing is uh, Pokemon Go, and of course a lot of people have played this game yeah. and, and many of them have stopped. But uh, the way that the game has evolved, is that uh, you know it's no longer just you as a lonely solitary person running around catching Pokemon. They've changed all the dynamics so that mm. now you know, for example, raiding uh, that gym that's in front of your uh, uh, place here. Oh, did you see that? Yes. Is there is there there's a gym set up there? Did so, somebody set that up, or is that automatically just put there? Uh, they, they, they they picked um, a whole bunch of uh, you know. Uh, you know random spots. Random things that are like uh, right. uh, uh, like statues or. Our figures and that stuff. So you have a fountain in front of your place. So they said, "Oh, fountain. Yeah, okay. That will be a marker." Oh, uh, weird. And, uh, so, 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 yeah. Or you know, it could be like a park bench with someone you know dedicated to somebody's name or whatever. Yeah, because I'm looking outside, and all of a sudden, there's nobody in the street. And all of a sudden, yeah. there's 20 people there. Yeah. And then a minute later, they're gone. Yeah. So basically, it's all about um, um, uh, you know the do, you know doing these gym combats and that uh, sort of. So it's no longer. Yeah, you need the help of one person because one person is not going to be strong enough to take down those raid bosses. Yeah, you need more people. Right. Oh. More people means more devices. <laughs> okay, so look at this. This is my travel bag, and so these are my extra devices for playing Pokemon Go. So are these this. <laughs> And just random phones that you bought some cheaply just for oh, the game? Oh, yeah, yeah, some of them were just someone threw in the, in the recycle bin. And I just, <laughs> Why do you, so I, I don't know, why do you need so many phones? Because the, the raid bosses, you can't defeat with one guy. You need like seven guys to take it down. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I normally carry, yeah, I normally carry five, so I was a carry six. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a good play. Now, of course, the problem becomes, well, how do you hold these phones and, and, and tap and do all this stuff? So I decided... I'm gonna build a a raid <laughs> portable raid device here. So which is this, this is allows me to to uh, hold all the phones uh, in the I'll help you out here. Yeah, yeah. Put all the phones into the box. We're gonna put, put put it up there. So yeah. So then you can tap them. 
Okay. And then you have this glass that goes back. Yeah, I have this glass that goes over it, so because of course in Vancouver it rains a lot. And yeah, it does. So, so that way this will allow me to, to still tap it and keep the rain <laughs> off of it. Uh, I've attached a, a guitar strap to this to the device, so I can wear this around my neck, and I can then not use any hands to hold the box. I can then still tap. It's amazing. So basically, yeah. So for yeah. all the, the people who are using, you know, what is it, Pokemon trays, you know, this is the kind of a. It's, uh, this is a. I, I can not believe this when you brought this in. I'm like, we have to incorporate this in the episode. It's so wild. <laughs> do you ever like? I'm being not being funny. Do people like to ask you what the hell are you doing? Oh uh, yeah. So there's a lot of people who don't normally know, what, you know, what, what, like you know, <laughs> while you're standing there, you're like, are you selling popcorn or? Whatever? Are you selling iPhones? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So? But uh, you know, but everyone in the group knows that. Hey, you know, that's a good idea. You know, yeah. it, it, it sort of beats like you know your your, your dinner service tray that some people. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it must be like if I saw you walking down the road, I'm like, what is it? What is he doing? I wouldn't even. I didn't even know that you needed that many people to play. Now I thought it was yeah. just still you went up, and I thought there was really legendary Pokemon or whatever at certain spots, and then that's why you don't want to go there. But no, it doesn't work that way. No, no, no. They, 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 they fix them all into these gyms. Yeah. And then at certain times, you know. Uh, you coordinate with social media to tell people, hey, you know, the, this uh, boss is at this particular point for the next 45 minutes. Yeah. Who's in? So, uh, like, for you, how many, uh, for a thing of completion, how well are you doing in the game? Uh, I'm at level 39, so one more right. level to go and then we, uh, I'll max it out at level 40. Oh, so level 40 is max? Yeah. Wow, so, and then you have every, all, all the Pokemon uh, up to this point? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I'm, oh, shit, I'm, wow. I'm short like 20 or so, but yeah. It, yeah, it, still it, not too bad again. Yeah, not, not, yeah, it's, it's attainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, so, that that was great. I still, we, we had to incorporate the end there. Let's talk about, um, go back to Japanese games, just for a yeah. brief moment um, before we continue on. Graduation, I know you wanted to talk about yes, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just remember that yeah. at the top of my head. That was another one of these uh, games that, uh, you know, uh, you know, Again, there's one of these ones where, uh, you know, a Japanese type of a game, you're the teacher and you're basically uh, charge like five students yeah, or these five students. And again, it's, it's all in Japanese and you know, so, so it's really hard to, to sort of understand exactly what's going on. But it's one of those things where we kind of mapped it all out. You know, we, we, Wasn't this on PC? Yes, yeah, for the PC engine. It's on PC. I know it was on the PC. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, am PC yeah. Engine, and it got yeah. ports to a bunch of other things as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the original things were on like like, like those Japanese computers that were made uh, for uh, PC88. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, that kind of stuff. And then they ported uh, a version over to um, uh, the PC Engine, and then you know Sega Saturn. So how did you on. play that back in there? Was it Daisuke like doing all the translations for you? Well, well yeah. Well, so basically, I had to use my, one of my translators to, to basically you know give me a hand uh, telling me what I'm supposed to do in this game, right? Yeah. And basically, we managed to translate the grid out. Yeah. So that basically, uh, if you will, uh, each student has a kind of a scorecard. Yeah. It uh, basically has their hit points, their um, you know, f uh, their fatigue level, uh, whether they're happy or sad. Well, was it was it to the point? Was it a dating simulator? Was it like Tokimaki Memorial? Uh, uh, not. No, not it wasn't a dating simulator. What what is it? It's it, it, more a micromanaging yeah. simulator. Right, yeah. because you're the teacher. You don't want to be molesting the students yeah. every day. Although that was one of the endings, though. No, oh, yeah. one of the endings you, the teacher did date so, 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 Ideally speaking, yeah. you, you're supposed to make sure that all the all the students graduate and get good jobs, and get married <laughs> off, whatever. But the problem is that you know, if you if you really worked hard and you know kind of got onto the students' good side and you kept them, you know, whatever their heart level high enough, oh, Jesus. kept the hit points high enough, you know, you kept on giving them them little gifts. Oh and all my God! Stuff, then yeah, you can end up getting married to one of the students and then you get that uh, big, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> get the big uh, horrible teacher rating and <laughs> yeah these those style of games mm -hmm. were a really big deal those simulation games by yeah. even konami as they were saying the tokimeki memorial series yeah. they were big they were like back then you'd walk into any um like mall here in vancouver and that's all you'd see or those character designs yes, everywhere yes. Yeah, like yeah, uh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah tokimeki memorial was, was just a big gaming <laughs> sim yeah thing. But then, yeah, yeah, they, they had all those other ones. Uh, the graduation being another one. Uh, debut is another one. Debut, right? Yeah. I remember that. Which is a, an, an idol singer simulation. And those kind of like nowadays, those have kind of died off. Yeah, because I, 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 you know, the, the people just can't really, you know, focus on it. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's boring now yeah. from how far video games have come. Because back then, there's like. Every day is you time with the grid system. You say, "Here's some chocolates. Here's some this." And yeah. here, you, like you give them like a, a good compliment, and and then another day would roll by, and it'd be that kind of yeah. environment. 
So yeah, we covered a lot of older school games there, and then the Dreamcast came out. That's right, yeah. And that's something else we wanted to talk about, and mm -hmm. you had that in the store at that time? Yeah, yeah, I was, again, I was one of the you know, first people to, you know, to get the Dreamcast. Did you import it? Yes, I, I, I had yeah. to get both, because as I said, again, at the, at the beginning, um, the, the Dreamcast also had the region lock system in yeah. it, so you couldn't uh, play games from Japan right away. And there was a whole bunch of games, that, uh, the Japanese games I was interested in. Um, I remember the, the 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 one that I it was it was it wasn't one of the ones that I initially was uh, was interested in, but uh, that I got into interested in was uh, you know kind of a, you know, uh, one of these uh, um, uh, secret favorites of mine. <laughs> oh yeah, Magic the Gathering. Really? Yeah. Um, back in the Windows ninety five days, I really loved playing that window uh, that Magic the Gathering, uh, the, the, the Return to Chandelar thing. Oh, where yeah, we basically yeah. wandered around a map and. And you did magic battles, and then you 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 won cards, and you and you and you got you bought cards, and you traded them, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. But they never really made a newer version of that. Right. And, and so uh, came on the uh, um, the Dreamcast. The Japanese made a Magic the Gathering game for the Dreamcast. Did, did this ever come out over here? No, it never came out so over here. So this is strictly for Japan. Yeah. Oh wow! Even I didn't know about yeah. this. And so uh, and then and, you know and you know so so basically it was based off of sixth edition. Right. Uh, for those who play Magic. Um, and basically, yeah, it basically allowed you to wander around this kind of world, and you you, you, you did magic battles against people. You built your your deck, you get the you know spot. And you were able to navigate yourself through the game, yeah. even though it's like in Japanese. It's, yeah, all the text and all that stuff is all in Japanese. But anyone who recognizes the card, oh, you like, can just play the card. Yeah, were the cards in English? The cards, uh, the text on the cards were not in English; they were in Japanese. But you, re you but, knew. but but the pictures are the same. And you knew so, uh, it. you had so, it memorized so, back then. Yeah, so a circle protection red was yeah. you know, is the same picture on the English circle protection red. Right. So you knew that. Okay, uh, I'll play that card or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did the Dreamcast do that? That was a very big system in your store. That yeah, everybody yeah, was yeah. going nuts for that yeah, uh, type of thing. Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, you know, a, a lot of people. I remember was playing a. Uh, uh, Jet Set Radio. Oh yes, uh, Power Stone. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, was absolutely amazing. Yeah. What do you think when you think back to having the store, the anime store, all those years? What was the most popular game that, like, maybe not by you or by me, but by everybody else? Like, was there one game that really captured everybody back then? Where everybody was, like, oh, I got to play this. Was it Street Fighter? Street Fighter was a pretty big one, but I'd have to say the Grand Theft Auto series. Oh, that really, yeah. Because yeah. I remember when that first came out. You know, we like, that was like you know eight hours a day for like two months, three months. Yeah, straight. yeah, yeah. Um, I remember even when, when was, I think it was Grand Theft Auto Three when that came out. Right. We burnt out the, the laser on the PlayStation Two. <laughs> it was <laughs> very like, easy to oh, do with those. Yeah, 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 those were yeah. kind of temperamental machines back then. Yeah. Oh. I think I I think I was on my third PlayStation Two after a while. Yeah, was just... yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. I think I must have traded the, the, the store's PlayStation Two at least. Twice yeah. or three times. So, so I, you, <laughs> thank I, God for EB. <laughs> so I, I bet, I bet even for you, you like, for Vancouver here. I'm gonna do an entire episode on copied games in the future, but it was so easy to get pirated games. Like you must have been buying Dreamcast games, the same as everybody else. Going to the mall. Remember, like what it used to be like. You could go to Parker Place and oh yeah, I mean there'd be an entire room full of copied games. You're like, oh, I'll take number three and number twenty five and number eight. Yeah. Or you know, to number two hundred forty-five, and get all these Dreamcast games, and that's that was the death of the Dreamcast. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, it's just because you know the, the limited number of units out there, and it's just you know. Uh, but piracy was very big in Vancouver. It was, yes. Mm -hmm. Like huge. Yeah. PlayStation One, the Dreamcast. I mean, look at even the Game Doctor. I, you could walk into a store and buy a Game Doctor, and yeah. you know, and then just. Copy games. It was very yeah, easy to trade, and, and, and there was always there, there was always these places that you go to. It was like, you know, here's my PlayStation. Uh, you know, do the whatever mod, and they did no. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's a, you know, version. Uh, you know, yeah, it was a ver it's a version A1. Okay, so we need this chip. We do some software. Oh, yeah. Thirty minutes later, here you go. And we all knew people yeah. who modded Xboxes and all that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you know, to, to, to be able to get your Japanese games on there, your ROMs and all that stuff. Yeah. It's quite funny. I gotta know when did you close the store? What what was the what year was that? Uh, two thousand four. Two thousand. I got married. That's when you got married. Yeah. Was it? Did you close the store because you got married or because the times are changing? A little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, I already started, of, you know, you know, started to see the shift in how anime was going. I mean, this is at the time where again, this is the. Uh, 
the, the rise to oversaturation of anime. Yes. Um, so that was, you know, 2004. So, and then again, you know, uh, at this time I was also getting married. So, you know, uh, uh, anyone knows that uh, when you're running a store or doing your own business, uh, it's very consumptive of oh, your yes. time. It just can, you know, you got, you know, you're in the store working for, you know, mm. from when it's open to close, and then when you go home, you got to do inventory, or doing orders. Yeah, you had a lot of volunteers and things yeah. like that, but still, yeah. that was a very time-consuming thing. Very time-consuming, yeah. You Absolutely. know, and I, I don't know how profitable profitable it was, but I couldn't see it being that profitable. I mean, like, oh wow, we're gonna keep this going forever. Well, no, no, it's it's, not, it's just one of those things. That it's it's uh, you know, it's not. Uh, uh, profitable in the sense that you're going to use it, the, you know, the money to go and buy, you know, cars and yeah, that yeah, stuff. it's more like no, you can it's sustain more than you, everything. Yeah, you can you can go buy the next laser disc, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I understand yeah. that and feeling. You can buy the next game, you know. Yeah, yeah just and yeah, yeah, yeah. That the Will store was probably one of the greatest stores to go in back then. It was like, I actually drove past the one of your original locations the other day, hmm. and I looked, and it's a comic book store now, and I thought, oh wow, it's so weird. All these years later, it reverted back to being a kind of like a comic-y kind of store yeah, in that yeah. kind of regard. Mm -hmm. Do you see that lately? No? No, no. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's right by, in yeah. your original place, I think back in 95. So here's something. Yeah. You were really into DDR. Yes. Uh, there was you a, were insane yes, into it, in there, fact. There, there was a, well, I would really, I really like that game because, again, it's, it's uh, you know, because it, 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 when we went down to, uh, uh, to all those malls and that kind of stuff in Richmond, and, and that was the big thing, right? Every, Huge. Every arcade had a DDR machine or, or the Korean versions of Pump or whatever, and so everyone was playing that, right? Yeah. And so yeah, again, you know, I, I you know I got into playing that thing, um, but again, you know, I got to a point where I couldn't get any really farther, right? I mean, what I, do you mean you couldn't get any far, farther? You know, like you know how basically you know you can only seem to move your feet as fast as you can really move your feet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I mean, you know, when you get up to like you know paranoia at you know seven steps <laughs> or whatever, that's like okay, that's, <laughs> that's as fast as I can go. Yeah. So you oh wait, so you you reached your yeah. limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your totally, limit, yeah. your limit break for yeah, yourself. Yeah. And all of that. I remember you and the, like a group of people would always go to all the arcades and totally practice on the machine. Yeah, we totally practice on the, the machine. We started playing that, and, and then and that's when we also started getting into all those other music games. Because again, this is that era where uh, a big boom of music, yes, timing games sort of came out. Yeah, Guitar Hero was kicking Hero, in yeah, and all so, of that uh, stuff. Drum, yeah. I, I really got into Drum Mania. Yeah, um, and uh, playing uh, playing on that thing. Even I even I had the the game pad at home for playing DDR. I, yeah. could, I couldn't believe how into it. I sucked at the game. I yeah. tried. Yeah. I felt good when I could just do basic stuff. Yeah. But when you look back on it now, it's kind of interesting that that was a thing. Yeah. It's kind of died off a lot now. But you even built your own machine. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I built a, you know, like a, like a DDR dance mat out of metal. Yeah. Uh, I built a, 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 a drum mania. Um, drum pad out of practice pads and, and like uh, and pipes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, made, made all, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah, you did some pretty amazing things back then, but that's an era in, in Japanese games. I, I don't think we'll see the same. You see it like arcades have also died. Yeah. You know, like back in the day for us, arcades were where you went, oh wow, this is the, the latest, greatest game. Wow, I wish I could have this at home and you'd have a dumbed down port. Yeah. Where when you got to the Dreamcast, you realized, wow, the, the arcade game is the same as the home console game, and now yeah. games are better than anything in, in any arcade. And arcades are pretty much dead. There's a few arcades in Richmond where you know we've gone to quite a lot, and even they're starting to close their doors yeah. now. Yeah, because it, it, it's, cause there's you know it's hard to you know come up with the game ideas and that kind of stuff that uh, you know can only be experienced in the arcade per se. The word. Yeah. Like I mean, sure. I mean you know. There are certain games still that you you know that, that you could uh, you know sort of port or make something of. Uh, my, my example is that I, I uh, um, uh, Power Power Paradise. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I actually went out and got the arcade game for that uh, unit, and um, you know nowadays they've got those uh, sort of like little. The sensors, I guess. Yeah, it sort of works, but it's not really. Yeah, the same I, feel. I remember even back yeah. then they had some a lot of sensor games. That was the one, the one great thing of living in Vancouver in Richmond. All those malls. Yeah, Johan Center, Parker Place, yeah. and you go in there, and there'd always be a CD arcade in the back, uh, and it was all these Japanese games, and they were so interesting and so fun. Yes, I found so many great games back then, like Macross the shooting game, Macross Plus the shooting game, yeah, yeah. something like that. It was crazy that you get something like that. And I don't think in a lot of other places, say in 
America or Europe, you would see that the same as what we had yeah, here. Yeah, that's it. And so, yeah, that's why a lot of us grew up with Japanese games and, and things, because it was so, just in close proximity. Yeah, it was accessible. It was so yeah. accessible. Yeah. And it, became, it was part of the culture here in Vancouver. If you're in an anime, it was unbelievable. And it's even sadder that a lot of the stores we would go to to get some of our video game magazines, mm -hmm. you know, like PC Engine Freak and all that, and yeah. what was it, the Iwasi books? Iwasi books, though, yeah. They're gone. Yeah. Sophia's bookstore is gone. Yeah. All the great old Japanese-style bookstores, Chinese bookstores, are gone. Yeah. And can't get anything anymore. There's a whole era that's dying of Japanese games. and But Japanese games are getting a lot better now. Yes. You know, yeah. like, they, they, they took a little bit of a, a hit. And then they, in the last bunch of years, we've gone through the roof. Yeah. It's been really, really good. Are you playing anything recently? Do you play anything nowadays? Um... Uh, right now, I'm playing. Uh, other than Pokemon Go, the other one, the other game that I'm, I'm sort of focusing on was uh, the Japanese re-release of uh, Wizardry. Oh yes. Yeah. So that, that that classic game of Wizardry that used to be on the Apple II computer. That influenced Dragon yeah. Quest and everything. Yeah, it was basically you know your, your basic dungeon crawling type game. They re-released uh, that version. Oh. Uh, uh, in, 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 in Japanese. Yeah. But it's, it's the same game. Is it like on PC? No, it's a uh, mobile. Oh, so. Yeah. So is that only Japanese? You can't get it any other way? Uh, yes, it's only in Japanese. But oh, that would have been yeah. so neat to play that. I would but love to play but that. Yeah, but it's, you can still play it and, and uh, you know. Dallin, but it's just in Japanese. Yeah, it's just in Japanese. Though. So was that a big thing for you to play that? Was that really... Yeah, yeah. You had a lot of nostalgia for it? Yeah, I, I was really after a, a good old fashion, you know, here's my characters, I want to go roll into the dungeon and just, you know... Go for it. Hack and slash and, you know... There's a lot of, like, you know, going back, there was a lot of older school games like Bard's Tale and yeah, Wizardry and... Might, Might and Magic. Might and Magic was yeah, insane. Yeah. Yeah. Those games are tough, folks, back then. Ultima. Yeah. Oh, yes, you also, know, yeah. oh my god, some of those games are really, really tough. They, they think games have become so streamlined now. Mm. Sometimes they almost play themselves out a little too much and, and all of that. But thank you for coming on. And I want to say this, me and Will about six months ago filmed a lot of his anime collection. And it's a lot, like there's so many sections of it. It's so long. It's over an hour long. I haven't assembled it. If you want to see that, give me a thumbs up on the video. That's a, like a, a response I can kind of go off to assemble this crazy episode <laughs> and make it into something entertaining and, and all that. Because it, it is a long episode. I was really nervous about it. I'm like, oh my God, people's attention spans nowadays? Because it's <laughs> we get into laser discs and we actually go to Will's place and look at his PC Engine collection. He's got so many gems over there and kind of delve into things a little bit more. But we just wanted to come in today and talk about Japanese games and as always, so great to have you here. Absolutely. 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 We got to do this absolutely more often. So anyways, guys, until next time.